Today on the show, we're talking the new 2025 Toyota 4Runner. And uh, big news that happened yesterday was that it's going to get the Trail Hunter edition, which I'm very excited by because, well, we've seen kind of, I've seen the Trail Hunter in person, uh, did some walk around videos on that. And it's very exciting to me in the truck. So the idea that they're bringing this, you know, capability to the 4Runner, that's pretty freaking exciting. And I want to go over some motor options that I still think might happen. And I'm probably going to be wrong. When we watch the back the video that Toyota does for the launch, you'll probably say, Dave, you were just completely wrong. But that's the fun of these things. So play along and uh, speculate with me down in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, smash that like button for me and think about giving us a subscription. So I first want to bring up the Trail Hunter. This is the uh, Tacoma Trail Hunter. And I want to kind of go over some things because... Because I think the 4Runner is going to be very similar. I would like it to have its own front end. But I do think there's going to be a lot of similarities to this. And uh, rear locker being one of those. And no front locker. That's right. I do not think that the next 25 is going to have a front locker, sadly. Because Toyota has this. Uh, they're very bullish on their crawl control features. And they're like, it's just as good. And we think they let the computer do that. And I'm old school. I just like to push the button know that it's engaged. So that's one thing for me that uh, might be a bummer. Might be a bummer for me that it doesn't get a front locker, but I also think that it's going to get the sway bar disconnect that, like, the Ford Bronco came out. They've brought it to, you know, the Tacoma, and it's been a big hit if you can get it because, well, they're having some issues actually building these and getting these sway bars. A lot of people have had these on order. You remove the sway bar, and your order gets built real quick because it's a new feature. So these things are to be expected from Toyota from time to time when they bring new features like this out, that the demand's higher than uh, they were expecting. And, well, I think that might be a problem with the new 4Runner, but I think it's going to be a problem worth waiting for. I really do. I also think that, you know, all the crawl control features, all the, all the radio features that you've seen in the next Tacoma, it's going to be in this truck. We've seen the big screen in the dash, you know, with the window reveal rolling down. We've seen this. So there's nothing new to that. So what else are we going to get with this? I do think we're going to get real rock sliders. Though I am big on aftermarket. I think aftermarket generally does quite a bit better than, uh, you know, the silly, the silly OEMs. But they have to go through a lot of regulations to make their products crash test worthy. I also think that we're going to get, um, you know, maybe two motor options. I've been back and forth on this, but I really do think that they'll, in the lower trims, like the SR5, I think they'll offer just the 2.4 in the turbocharged, and I think then they'll they'll jump into the uh, hybrid system, the iForce Max system, in for, like, the Trail Hunter. Now, do they do a TRD Pro version of this thing? That might be something we look at, because why? You know, the TRD Pro version's been the off-road version of this truck for quite a while, the most capable, but... This is not, you know, I can understand the TRD Pro version for the the Tacoma because they are the idea of that truck is high speed, you know, let's let's really crank it down where I think the Trail Hunter edition fills the void of that for the 4Runner. So I think you know what the suspension is going to be on this thing. It's going to be, you know, the old man emu lift on this and well that's that's kind of cool even though I think a lot of people, you know, they'll want the Trail Hunter version of this thing just be for the clout basically and then I think well they're just going to uh you know, put a real suspension under that anyways. But, you know, it's definitely going to be capable. As you can see right here, it's going to have the, you know, it's coming with the 33-inch tires, which is, that's something cool for the 4Runner, 33-inch tires. And hopefully the wheel wells are big enough to accept 35s because everybody wants to customize their vehicles. Um, I do think we're going to get a lot of capability from ARB. I think we'll see some ARB bumpers that might come out, whether they be a winch bumper that drops in the middle like everybody likes to do with the old the old style trucks. Do we get some kind of ARB recovery points in the rear like that you're going to see right here in the video? I hope so. I really do because they're trying to – they're trying. this is Toyota's playground. Everybody else is messing around. This is Toyota's playground, and I like the fact that with the trucks, they're taking it very seriously. So I like the fact, you know, hey – Forerunner is such a classic here in the United States, man. It was either it or the Pathfinder from Nissan for a long time. And then, you know, the big three jumped in and kind of gave their offerings. And I still think that Toyota has just kept the heritage of the Forerunner and made it very capable. So you better leave me a comment if you think that it stayed capable through all these generations. Now, what do I think about pricing of this thing? Well, since we are getting the Trail Hunter version of this thing, it kind of scares me on pricing because... You know, in the previous video I've done on this thing, it was, hey, I think that they're going to be a little cheaper than the Land Cruiser. Well, sadly, if they're doing a Trail Hunter version of this thing, I think you're talking fifty nine dollars to $65,000 for a 4Runner. And that, my friends, is ridiculous. In a world where you can get 
the new, you can get a Wrangler. You know, I know Wranglers are getting expensive, but you can get one for, you know, $50,000. It's very capable. The new Bronco, mid-50s to $60,000 is very capable. And the roof and all the panels come off. The doors come off. So how does Toyota combat that? Leave me a comment. I'm curious. What do you guys think that they're going to do? And engine options. Give me, let me know. You guys love to do that down below. Leave me a good, here's what I think is going to happen about this. Because at the end of the day, I've said it many times, they have to cut cylinders for, for you know, the emissions. That's the only way to get rid of, uh, you know, more carbon is, you know, less carbon out of the engine. So, I hope that I would hope I'm fingers crossed they're going to offer you guys a V6, but I just don't see it happening. And what do you think at the end of the day, if they do the high, the iForce Max, do they allow for some special plugins to make your campsites? Because this is a very camp camper friendly vehicle. It's a very overlander friendly vehicle. Do they offer some special features that really just cause Jeep and Ford with the Bronco to just have to take it to the next level? Because that's the way we're in. If it's going to be very expensive, they better take it to the next level. And uh, so you guys better as well. So smash that like button for me and hit the subscribe. And whether it be two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, this badass forerunner, I'm damn sure going to drive. It's been your All-Terrain Nation. I'm your host, David Boyd, and we're out. Peace, everybody. Love y'all.